We are looking at patterns. We are looking at patterns. Dealing with evil patterns. We said a pattern is a repeated or regular when in which some things happen or done. Things that repeat themselves. When things are done. Number two, we said a pattern or an evil pattern is a repeated or regular way in which some evil tendency occurs in a family. They occur in the family. Are you hearing me? You can look at, because of time, Ezekiel 16. Verse 1. Ezekiel 16, verse 1. You can look at it. There are certain things that happen in families. They repeat themselves. It's a pattern in a family. When you look at your family tree, you discover there are certain things that have been happening from the time you were young. You have grown in that family, living with them, and you have accepted that our family is like this or like that. In our family, we have got drunkards. Hello, my father, my grandfather used to drink, my father used to drink, I drink also, my auntie drinks, my cousin that. Hello, hello. Don't look at me with one eye. Ask your neighbor, my family, my neighbor, There are drunkards in your family. What about you? You used to drink. But because God loved you, He delivered you. you. Now, this God who delivered you, once you open your eyes, that you may see the patterns that have been there for many, many years, patterns that you never confronted, they have been repeating themselves. Now, sometimes it's sad that even those who are delivered, who stop drinking because it is a pattern in the family. You find that they will go for a family part or something and because it is in the family, they are tempted and they drink. Ask them and say, why? Why do they drink? But why do you drink? <laughs> okay. They are those who drink. Okay? You just find yourself it is there in your bloodline. It is a pattern. So you are born again, you speak in tongues, but there's this thing that wants to follow you in your walk with Christ. You want to serve the Lord with passion and zeal, but you find this thing hits you and you find yourself again in those evil things. I became, I be, I be, let me use a stronger word, wickedness. You find yourself in those wicked things. Why it is a pattern. You are born again, it is still looking for opportunity. The Bible says, don't give a devil a chance. You can be born again washed in the blood of Jesus. But you may find these things they want to follow you. Your father never spoke in tongues. Your mother never spoke in tongues. So you get saved. You begin to speak in tongues. From nowhere, the tongue just disappears. You stop speaking in tongues again. You used to lift your hands and worship and used to cry and refuse the presence of God. From nowhere, your hands go down. Your eyes now are... As we don't cry. You are very strong. You are fallen. Slide back to the Lord. It's a pattern. No one cried in worship. So the same devil has come against you. You have stopped worshiping in spirit and in truth and just enjoy the presence of God. We don't cry because of, of, of problems. We cry because of his love. We shed, his, our, we shed, you know, 
Some of us will shed tears in the presence of God. You know, if you Amen. Amen. Some of you don't even cry. You are just watching. No compassion, no feelings, no what's May God have mercy on you. On the most touching time in a funeral service when people are giving tributes. Hello? That's the most touching. But you need to change that also. Because some of you just want to give them a tribute to Pachirido. Mama, you used to love us, Mama. Because sometimes you should speak to your mama when she's alive. Make me feel good. Amen. Amen. At least speak those things. Okay, let me leave that thing alone. But let's touch one another when you're still alive. Amen. He's left a flower. <laughs> We're crying now. Somebody was alive. You didn't even buy them anything. You didn't even give them kumariro. When I'm a flower, I my flowers. You even take that flower? I will wake up and slap you. <laughs> and I say, you hypocrite. God forbid we don't die now, eh? Yes, Look at you. We are still alive. We are still living. So let's stop this thing. No, but like Quickly, there are things that you need to identify in your family and you need to deal with them as a born again believer. Now, quickly, we looked at the family tree of Father Abraham. We looked at three cases. Number one, we said. Abraham told a lie in Genesis 22. Examples of evil pattern. We looked at examples examples of evil patterns in the family tree of Abraham. Case number one, we said Abraham told a lie. Case number two, it went down to the son Isaac Isaac also told the lie in Genesis 27 verse 7. He goes to this grandchild now who became a supplanter. The wickedness started increasing now. From life to a supplanter, a crook, a deceiver. Jacob also told the lie. Genesis 27 verse 18 to 19. The brothers of Joseph lied in Genesis 37. No, your son has been eaten by lions. They lied to the father. Look at your neighbor say neighbor. How is it in your family? Do you tell lies? I want you to identify certain things because we need to identify them and we need to break them. So we are looking at the family tree of Father Abraham. Case number two. Abraham struggled to have children with his wife Sarah. We, we, saw in, we looked at Genesis 11 verse 30. Also Isaac also struggled to have children with Rebecca. That was the son. A pattern. Jacob also struggled to have a child with one of his wife. Genesis 30 verse 1. Please take those things. 
I want to give you a picture that will help you to identify curses with your family. Yes, you are born again. Thank God you are born again. That's the reason he saved you so that you can identify some of these things that we are sharing with you. We looked at case number three. Abraham had more than one wife. Genesis 16 verse 3. Genesis 25 verse 1. We looked at Jacob also had two wives. Ladies and gentlemen, us who are born again, we are empowered by God to see in the spirit, to identify patterns and deal with them. And I pray the Holy Ghost will give us grace to identify some of the things. So, when you look at your family tree, you will discover that there are certain things that have been repeating themselves. Maybe I've been, been taking time to pray or to look at your family tree. This week, I'm giving an assignment. Please, Go and look at your family tree. Both from your father's side and your mother's side. Now, if you are married, you must look at your father-in-law and mother-in-law. Are you hearing me? Because the Bible says the two shall become when the Lord delivered the ch children of Israel out of Egypt to the promised land, he says, when you enter that land, don't marry them because they will turn your hearts away from you to their idols. Look at your neighbor say, that is serious now. So God is communicating to you and I that there are people that you can marry and turn your heart away from God to idols. There are people that you can meet and connect you to occultism or witchcraft. Look at you. You need to be very careful. So to the single brothers and sisters, don't make the mistakes that people have made. You are privileged of this message to receive this message, to hear this message. So before you marry, scripture tells you that darkness and light can come together. A believer and an unbeliever. You have nothing in common. But some people go against the word of God. They say, no, I'll change this man. I'll bring him into the kingdom. My friend, it's either you manage to pray him or you pray you. <laughs> one of the two happened don't go against the word of God don't go against the word of God so we looked at three cases number one it was about lie, lies number two it was about struggling okay. children number three it was about them having more than one wife now let's look at the blood that speaks Every blood has a voice. So in the bloodline of Father Abraham, there was a voice. It was a voice of lies. It used to speak in the bloodline. There were struggles in the bloodline. There was a, a polygamy in the bloodline. Are you hearing me? So we see these struggles in the family tree of Father Abraham and in their bloodline. Every blood has a voice. Genesis 4 verse 10. Genesis 4 verse 10. I'll give you two points because of time. And then we'll pick it up next week. The other week we'll be looking at patterns. I would actually, I would just take you through family deliverance in the next few days. So make sure you come with your family. 
Those who are saying enough is enough. In Genesis 4 10, the Bible says, and they said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood. Somebody say blood. Cries out to me from the ground. Blood as a voice. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 24. The writer brings out this revelation. People say Hebrews written by Paul. Others they say we don't. Anyway, let me leave it there for the theologians. The Bible says to Jesus, the mediator of the, somebody said the new covenant. Shall the new covenant. And to the blood of the sprinkling that speaks. Somebody says speaks. Better things than that of Abel. Look at Chenobasir, blood has a voice. The Bible tells us the, the life of every creature is in the blood. Ladies and gentlemen, the voice that speaks in your bloodline in this season must be confronted. Amen. Now, if you don't have revelation, you are going to allow the blood to speak against you. I'm because I'm connected to the lineage of the Sinyangwe through the bloodline. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. See neighbor. neighbor. Who are you? Ask your neighbor. Say, Dimebanda. What's your surname? Who are you? What is your surname? Look in the eye of your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Start you from today. Let me tell you the truth. I want you to preach. Yes. Let me tell you the truth. The blood speaks. <laughs> now ask them. Magazia nyakambachani. What does your blood speak? Is there prosperity in your bloodline? Is there prosperity? In your blood, do you have stable marriages? There's nothing you can do about it. You find yourself in that family. There's nothing you can do about it. But there's something you can do about it in the realm of the spirit. You didn't choose uh, one, two, three, four. Now I want to be born in the Sinyangwe bloodline. But Sinyangwe Murikuti. And then I just appeared in the Sinyangwe. No. I just found myself in the Sinyangwe family. And the blood that was speaking in my father's house was premature death. So I'm born this family of nine and we started dying. We are struggling. My father started very well. Farm manager. Up there. Rising in life. And then he retired. From NRDC. He was supposed to get a house in Kaunda Square. He didn't work out in Kaunda Square. He got a house in Mutendele. No Malait. From a manager, manager. Mayadi, Mayadi into Kombon. Things started changing. If into Fayamba, Kuchi, are you hearing me? Because in his bloodline, Pawavo, no one stayed at the top. Is that you retire, you go back to the village. We had to pack our. <laughs> it was a sorry sight. 
we packed all the electric, electric what, uh, gadgets. We had to pack them, my TV, my fridge. We packed all those things. Just imagine how life can change just like that. You wake up in the morning, you touch your nose, you find this blast. Dark stuff from your nose. So you ask your friend, what is this? And then, and then they laugh at you. Ha ha ha! Chama mayadi. Chama mayadi. Swaza. They don't know. Nikolo boy. Kwa Nikolo boy. Walenwa menshia talala. We are drinking. Kwa tangu kupanga josaka. Wani shwa josaka. Do you know a josaka? Unamwa kama zam josaka. Have you drunk in the world? Unga nuzi cha. Unga nuzi cha. What can you tell me? I have been there. 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 The survival of the fittest. You must be tough. You must know how to survive. Oh, you have changed your life. I found these guys. They befriend. <laughs> I know, you know sometimes companies can befriend you. You can be befriended. We can, they can befriend you in the right way or in the wrong way. Hello? Bad company. Let me say bad company. Let me say bad company. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Bad company is bad. The Bible says, do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good. So I meet these guys. They befriend me. We become friends. How? They started removing mayadi and started putting kombon. That mindset, they had to deprogram me and program me to think in a certain way. The guys were bad. Bad, man. <laughs> I changed. Sanduka for yourself. Mayadi out, kombon in. They delivered me from my heart. I want to out. Thank God. 34 years ago, Jesus appeared to me. Right in the combo. Right in the combo. And there was transformation. From Mayadi to kingdom. <laughs> from Mayadi, I mean from, Kon, from Mayadi, I mean from Kombon, from Kombon out and then kingdom. So Mayadi was flushed out. Kingdom flushed out. Now, I mean, sorry, Mayadi and Kombon out. Now it was kingdom. It was no longer Mayadi or Kombon. It was kingdom. Samba said kingdom. And now I started dealing with issues in the blood because yes, I'm born again, but the blood of the Sinyangu is again. After giving my life to Jesus, the blood issues started pursuing me. After being encountering God, along the way I missed it because of the blood issues. A young man is vibrant. Loving the Lord, I missed it because this younger stuff, this blood stuff, was still pursuing me. Very zealous for God, and then I backslid, messed up. But because of salvation, crash in me. So every time I could just go before the Lord before I sleep because of the encounter that I had with Jesus when I gave my life so every time because of the whole experience so before I sleep I could repent please Lord have mercy I don't want to go to hell I will sleep wake up go back those things I became a slave and then there was a crusade somewhere in Mtende the man of God was preaching amen 
Amen. My wife attended that meeting. She attended the program. Blah, 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 blah. Fast forward. Had an encounter there. Said, let's go. Natulea. Invited me. Went there. Kuyako. Ah, this man of God was preaching. He called an autoco. I went forward. Kuyako. Laid hands on me. It was a deliverance session, I think. When he laid hands on me, power just entered my body. I felt the power of God flowing through my body and all those things that came over me, I feel as if something has just broken, like a chain has just broken and something left my heart. It's like I was tied, something just, power went through my body and something just left. I went down I was refilled with the Holy Ghost. So the infilling story. There was an infilling with the Holy Ghost. I went down. Ooh, poof. The time I got up, I was delivered. <laughs> and my journey started now. So I started very well. Along the way, the blood issues followed me. Backslid. The Lord delivered me. Came back to the Lord. I lost somebody. And I started pursuing God. In that ministry. Ooh. <laughs> Thank God for my wife. For being sensitive. Amen. So we can trim because we are not just a Just a patali. Oh, what what pastor whoope? But you are pastor, Mkwa. To achieve that, it is the power. Not to call her Monday. She's my lovely wife. I love her. Thank you so much for being sensitive to the Holy Ghost. So I got delivered. Na kakulwa. And uh, it's a long story. Stayed in this ministry. Very committed in church. And then this was, a, I think, a technical manager, Christian Voice, Reverend Kawele. He saw how committed I was in church. He said, ah, there's an opportunity at Christian Voice. So my wife was very sensitive. She pushed me into my destiny. You single men and you married men, you must be very sensitive with this women that we marry. Women can be sensitive to the Holy Ghost. Just, I, I think God has just heard them in such a way. When I humbled myself to follow her, things changed in my life. That's how God opened that door. Christian West. Started working there. Fast forward. Says pursuing God. There were still some issues that went to to come up. You know, my father was my grandfather, I'm told, was a hunter. And I was named after my grandfather. Middle name. My middle name was I won't give you that name because some of you are my setting son. If I give you that name, I won't give you that name. Especially my youth. I'm a setting son of a youth. Especially you youths. So, <laughs> so I, I started denouncing that name. But before that, first for 2003, we went to Ndala for a ministry, for ministry and standing in the gap. We are ministering, we are doing a lot of stuff. So I, I go for this program in Indola. And then this man of God says, Can you pray this pastor? Just go and pray. I want him to pray over you. So we entered this room. We started praying. The Lord gave him revelation. He started addressing the name, the middle name. Ladies and gentlemen, my hands went stiff. I encountered God. Left in dollar. A few years. You know, that's why when people say there's no deliverance, I just laugh. 
I was praying for people, I was doing stuff. I had an encounter in Indola. And then one day, I was praying and fasting. It was lunchtime. I decided to lock myself in the store just to pray from the store. While I was there, pray. The presence of God came in that room. Are you hearing me? came in that room <laughs> and deliverance started taking place. I felt something like a lion, that anger leaving my body. You can ask my wife. I used to vibrate. Whatever I find uh, <laughs> anger that's for the church. You know catapults? You know catapults? You know catapults? Malege. You know catapults? You know One time I made a mistake. She said, I don't want to buy it. She said, I don't want to buy it. Anger. 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 So and then I started connecting Kalti Lungu, I started dealing with those issues. So in that encounter, Christian voice, Christian voice, in my storeroom, the Lord touched me. That was where to call personal deliverance, where the Lord himself came down. To deal with me. Things started jumping out. Amen. Amen. Uh, manje, let me say this. In your anger, do not. In your But I won't sin. But I, I get upset with stuff. There's just this holy anger against this devil. <laughs> and anything to do, you know, uh, look, look at them say holy anger. It's okay to have holy anger. Not emotions. And some of us will just speak and after that you forget. We rebuke you out of love if you make mistakes. Tell my, ask my wife, me, I apologize. She knows. Even my kids, I'll tell them, oh, I was upset with you. you, you know, That's me. Since I'm going to apologize in Ivan, but if you really apologize. at least I want my events to remain open. So if I get upset, it's a conviction that no, that was beyond. I was, I was not in need. The Holy Ghost brings a conviction. I'll uh, go to the person. I'll make peace. Why do I do that? I want my heavens to open. Not only that, they when you encounter God, you become sensitive. So you're not upset forever. So in our bloodline, there are issues of anger. Premature death. Poverty. Lack. That's what was speaking. My father made some mistakes. So I started looking at my father's house, my mother's house, father-in-law, mother-in-law. So, asked my wife, I think one time my son, I said, look at your family and, let's, and let me look at my family. Let's put our notes together. So look at the Lumba family and look at the Sinanga family. The Bible says the two shall become one. So there's a mingling of blood. So you bring the Sinyangwe blood and the Lumba blood together. Now, in the Lumba blood, they have got their own issues. In the Sinyangwe blood, they have got their own issues. And the two shall become in marriage now. Those that are single, you, you usually connect yourself to the things you don't even know. In the name of love, we are making love. You are not making love, you are sinning. No, I was just making love. You were sinning. Luvembo. Fornication is a sin. So for us who are married, you become one. Meaning, whatever is in the blood of the Lumbas and the sin, you mingle. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Now it is a bomb. Boom. So in the Sinyangues, there are lies in the Lumbas, they've got their own issues with their and then you bring the lies and the issues of the Sinyangues. Boom. Let me bring it down. That some of you before you got married there are certain things that are happening in your life it's like you are going higher and higher and then you got married from nowhere things have started going down and you say before I got married ah, things were okay after getting married nothing was now things are hard which family What is in that bloodline? Our fathers used to say, our forefathers, our parents, our grandparents, they could tell you, don't marry in that family because in that family, they are so and so and so, so, and so, and so, 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 so. There are issues in that family. So you cannot marry from that family. In other words, they want their blood to remain clean and pure. They didn't know about blood issues or blood patterns. All they want to do is to preserve their seed. So they don't tell their blood to be contaminated. So no, no, you can't marry in that family or you can't marry so and so because of these issues in their family or in their bloodline. We don't want to partake of their suffering or their issues. I hope I'm explaining, I'm explaining this thing well. I'm trying to explain. <laughs> Are you getting me? Please. All things, in things of the bloodline are very difficult. I will explain next Sunday why blood was shed. I'm, are you hearing me? Now look at your neighbor. Whether single or married. Ask them how many are you in your body? How many blood covenants have you cut? How many people are you carrying in you? How many families do you have in you? They too shall become First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 15. I'll pause with this. I'm trying to put this thing together. So give me grace to communicate to your church, to your people. Do, don't you know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of the harlot? Certainly not. God forbid. Next verse. Next verse. Or, don't you know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her for the two he says shall become one flesh so it's not just in marriage even when you go out in prostitution you become a humanizer you sleep around you begin to connect yourself the two shall become the two shall become the two shall become Ask them, how many are you? Listen, when you are born again, your, your spirit, spirit is not born again. Your, man, your body is not born your again. We sin with this body. Your spirit is regenerated, born again. Your mind is not born again. Your emotion, yourself. So you must renew your mind. You must bring in the word in your system. So that you can deal with the issues of the body. So as a born again believer. Yes, you are regenerated. Yes, you are born again. But many a times. We struggle with the issues of the flesh. Magazi. So when you sleep with somebody who is a liar, a thief, a crook, a supplanter, all those things are transferred in you. Your fiance, 
Now, there's what you call father, son, so tie, or mother, daughter, son, so tie. Just from right. your father. They are coming from your father you, because of the blood. I said I'm from the Sinyangwe, so I'm the Sinyangwe bloodline. So, it's a so tie from my mother and my father. I'm connected through the bloodline. So, if you marry, you are going to marry into another family. Now, you are connecting your blood to another. Hello, somebody, another person. So when he delivered them, he said, where you go, don't marry them because they'll turn your hearts away from God to the idols. I, I, I think I'll start putting scriptures together to throw, to throw these things at you. So he, he warns them. And then Paul says, for the two shall become one. Ladies and gentlemen, there are men of God today who have gone down. Pastors, leaders, because they decided to ignore some of these things. They are loaded, wedded, anointed, but along the way, these devils went, up, went after them. They committed a doubt. They are sleeping around. Why? When you are married and you are the ex, don't say that you are strong. As long as you used to sleep together and you have never dealt with the soul tie and you meet somewhere, mm. my friend, you may find yourself in bed again because you are still one. That's boyfriend kaja. You are married, but that act of 2010 or 2005 or 000, 000, 000, you can still remember that encounter because the There's a song they used to sing there. Nadeka. There's a song they used to sing, and the first cut is. Eh? How do you know that? Song? So, when you're coming from a background. Why you had a lot of girlfriends and you are born again, the only thing you have to do as a born again believer, washed in the blood, begin to disconnect yourself. Just disconnect yourself by faith. Lord, I disconnect myself. You call out the name of that person. On that day, Lord, I committed that sin. I am born again. But this thing has been troubling me. Deliver me from so and so. So and so, I break the soul tie. I disconnect myself from you. I command you to leave my mind, leave my soul, leave my blood, leave my soul, leave my, soul, leave my, soul, leave my disconnect yourself otherwise that girlfriend can bring you down that boyfriend can bring you down your two shall become one it's difficult to deny yourself I've seen young ladies making a mistake the young man came I love you I love you fell in love not in love in sin the girl became pregnant the young boy refused responsibilities. So I'm not responsible. He went into hiding. After five years, the young boy comes back. You are restored. You are looking beautiful now. God has helped you. You are healed from disappointment and pain. You are looking sharp, sharp. God has raised you. And this young man comes. Ah, you know what? I was young. You know, I was just young, you know. I was young. I just made a mistake, you know. That child is my child. Ah, you are looking beautiful. You know. You know. I don't know. But you find you also because you haven't dealt with the soldier, you are still connected to him. You are still one. 
you are joined together you are still one instead of resisting <laughs> i understand i understand it's difficult to deny yourself you are still one you are still attached you are still connected and you know uh, today i'm giving you the word the bible says fools because of foolishness they were afflicted may the word bring deliverance to you today look at your neighbor's neighbor run for your life make sure you disconnect yourself from your ex ex boyfriend disconnect yourself, disconnect yourself from the issues of your father your, your mother hello so in Genesis 12 God was saying Abraham separate yourself from your country your family hello somebody and from your father's house separate yourself may God open your spiritual eyes and your physical eyes may you see what is in your family tree don't allow anything to come near you that is no bloodline you will go down was your father a worshiper? Wasn't a worshiper? Your mother. So you struggled even just staying in church from morning. You, you can stay in your office from 06 hours to 18 hours. You are working. In church, you get tired easily. By market, by Kazo. By Kazo, by Kazo. By Kazo, by Kazo. By Kazo, by Kazo. But you can't sit in church. There are a lot of people in church in Italy. At your neighbor said, Eba, it's things of the blood. Wow. Celebrate that she has an assignment. <laughs> ah, I think I'll pause right here. I pray that it gives me grace. There are a few things I need to bring out. Because we looked at the country and it talks about the family. And then it says, out of your father's house. So you must be delivered from your country, from your family, and from your father's house. But I went further today to show you about issues in your blood. I just touched here and there. At the time we get into scripture, your eyes will open. Why is it born again believers now? I've gone back drinking. Yesterday I was talking to somebody who was telling me, Apostle, worship leaders are drinking in this nation. Some leaders. This nation can drink. People in Zambia. 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 Ha! We are, we are leaving a meeting. We, 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 we are coming from a church meeting and we are passing through a place. There are more cars parked in a, in a bar than at church. I, I, was, I said, Lord, should help us? But the Lord opened my eyes. Look at our traditional ceremonies. Look at the libations that go on. They will take beer, they will drink, and they will begin to pour beer on the what? Have you seen that? How sometimes they pour beer on the ground. What is that? This land has got a mouth. So you are servicing the orders now. You are going to connect the land of Zambia to drunkardness. Some of these things, the Lord will open your eyes. Zambia. Zambia. In America, they are drinking. Clubbing. We need to break the case. I'm telling you. 
Most of these traditional ceremonies, you can see even sometimes our chiefs, they will take beer, they will <laughs> appeasing spirit. Man, you are drinking alcohol like fish. And then they'll come. Ah, he's drinking alcohol, you see? Why are you asking? Keep on drinking. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. The fact that you're asking me, there's something wrong with it. Me, I stopped debating. No, more. I, I don't debate such things. Um, I don't. No, I boost a Tuesday. 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 Continue drinking. You are going to encounter God and then you stop. Because sometimes you want to argue. Ah, no, just preach the gospel. I stop those days when I get Pamadiro. You continue drinking and smoking me, I will continue preaching. Because, because whether I was like I took a page of when they just leave that place, they will continue drinking. So just keep on drinking. We are praying for you. <laughs> you will Stop preaching messages when you go for evangelism. You start arguing. Just preach Jesus. Jesus will do the rest. Some of us when they could do now. When Jesus appeared, we stopped. We stopped. Jesus will visit them, they will stop. What are you going to achieve? Stop drinking. You go to Guyana. Preach Jesus. Jesus will bring conviction. Jesus will break the curse. What am I saying? These issues of the blood, the blood of Jesus was shed to purify your blood.